Today I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite ways to create vintage sounding samples inside of FL Studio or any DAW that you use. I'm going to talk about post-processing, different effects that I like to use, different plugins, different effect chains, strategies, a bunch of different things. Let's get into it. To begin, I want to make a melody with you guys quick to talk about a few strategies that I like to use. I already have all the sounds that I plan on using up and then we'll add the effects as we go. The first thing I want to do is speed up the sample. This is what it sounds like to start it from miles. We're going to speed it up now. It's like 145 maybe. Yeah. Then I'm going to get like a one note ambience going, just like a constant sort of filler, really subtle. I think this is good. You really don't got to overthink this. I really just pick a note. If I don't like it, like halfway through the melody, I'll change it later on. I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm going to put this like bedroom pop piano effect chain that I have on it. Sort of blends it in there a little bit better. Maybe for the second part, we could experiment with another note. I'll just pick like an interval, two notes that I think sound good all the way through. The melody is similar to the first thing that we did, except now it's two notes and this is a much different sound and we're gonna affect it much differently as well. Okay, so I'm kind of going off the one note ambience that I did a little bit here. I will add like a, a pluck and stuff with the piano later on, but really it's simple. Just pick a piano, pitch it down an octave as long as it has some pluck to it. Anything that sounds like this. Labs, this is a free plugin. Um, it doesn't have the same pluck to it, but if you add some basic effects like this is a free plugin, it just basically makes it mono and like adds some tube distortion to it. Um, chorus and then this RC20 or whatever like tape emulator and just add some compression to it and you'll get that pluck and then you can pitch it down too. So this strategy, it doesn't always work. I'll, I'll take like three bells or percussive sounds with like some tone to them. And then I'll go through and I'll create a melody with one. So I'll take this first, so it sounds like something simple. And I'll, I'll explain why in a second. I don't love this melody, but it really doesn't matter too much. I usually go in like increments of three. So like every section has three notes and that's because we have three different bell sounds. So we're going to take one of the sections, one of the parts, we're going to take this low part. We're going to put it on this sound and then we're going to go back into this main one get rid of it and then we're going to take every other note and we're going to go over to here and paste it and then go back to this main one and then just get rid of it as well but i think a plugin like portal would do at least in this instance that's kind of what it reminds me of yeah i like this one bounce those sounds out and reverse them so we'll try to make them into a perk loop. Cool method to create texture. Reverse it now. Okay, so this doesn't sound great in its current position. Change the order. Yeah, definitely a lot to work with there. A lot of different layers. That's that melody. Let's move on to the next thing. This next one is a very interesting sample. I'm trying to manipulate my vocal, pitching it down, format shifting it. I'm pretty sure like the, the track that I was messing with is a, it's me playing guitar while doing my humming. Um, and I, I messed around with it a lot. So we'll take you layer by layer through this one. This is what we start with. <laughs> It 
might sound like a lot, but it's just a guitar, me singing, pitched around a bunch, form and shift, EQ'd a little bit to tame as well, so it sounds like... And then there's just like a, a one-shot bell, it's this constellation bell right here. It's just that, um, and it's playing the same notes that I was singing. This is the first pattern. We have a bunch of like blown out, distorted textures going on. Um, this is what they are. And this is what it sounds like before effects. So usually the first thing I'll add when I'm affecting a sound like this is this RC20. Usually when I open RC20, I'll just open it and literally just hit through all of these presets until I find one that I like. With these sort of sounds that are meant to be in the background and meant to be distorted, I like to go for something super blown out and um, a little bit dramatic sometimes. Alter Boy is another very useful plugin. It's the reason why the vocal doesn't sound as bad as it probably should. This is what Alter Boy did. Some, some weird stuff. And the reason why it's doing weird stuff is this format knob. I'm pretty sure if you turn this back, that it was. Yeah. So this one, like if you turn it like against the grade, like it doesn't want to be turned down like this. So that's when it starts to like throw a fit. This, um, the guitar pitch down an octave. Sounds a little bit more like me now. I really like to do this with guitar tracks and tracks in general. I really like bouncing audio clips and pitching them down and turning down the lower pitch version to blend it with upper pitch version. Just gives it some depth. I don't really think it creates muddiness. Sometimes maybe it does a little bit. You can just get rid of some EQ on the low end. You should be good. I really like to do that. I also really like to bounce everything out in a sample and I like to half time it underneath and take out a bunch of low end. And also I like pitching up an octave after I bounced everything out as well. Russian loops, filling it out. And this layer without effects, I just pitched it up. I really like pitching down pianos an octave. This is a real piano from the studio. I was messing around on this and I was playing the melody through the speakers at the studio, but also just like voice memoing the piano. So the voice memo got the piano and the speakers a little bit. Speakers were turned down. I like to like bleed recordings into each other sometimes. It creates cool little subtleties and whatnot within the recording, especially when you start pitching them up and down and reversing them. You can hear my guitar in there a little bit. First thing I did was pitch it down. Then I got rid of some low end. And then I added RC20. What are these? Oh yeah. A part of the sample that was reversed, just the guitar track. Um, and sometimes when you start layering distortion and pitching up and down these like sounds that are tonal, they have like some notes going on, but also have a little bit of like texture and percussive stuff to them. I'll, I'll, I'll play it with no effects first, actually. Okay, all effects off. This is what it sounds like. Primary thing here is the Tube Screamer. And then like tame it with this EQ. And then it reverbed. I always like to make sure that my reverbs are before my tube screamer or whatever distortion plugin I'm using. So like the reverb is distorted too. Sometimes if you like put the reverb the other way around, like it can sort of mellow out the distortion, which is also a cool effect. It really all depends on what you're going for, but I want like a gritty sort of sound for this. Now we just have a delay too. So filling it out a little bit more and alter boy, just form and shifting it down an octave. And then we also reversed it. Oh yeah, this is just a, a me soloing. EQ, you know, that low end that's coming from the speakers. Megaverb, Megaverb is a super, super cool plugin. It's like a distorted reverb sort of preset. Another reverb that I really like is Spring Reverb from Arturia. It's like another cool distorted sort of effect. Let's see if we can replace it. This one's a little bit more clean than the last one, but it's cool effects though. And then we have the Alter Boy down and octave again. I think it's time for me to do another kit, and I don't necessarily want it to be a, a melody kit like I've always done. I want to do something a little bit more inside the box. Along the lines of this video with like effect chains, and different preset banks. I want to do an analog lab bank at some point. Yeah, any sort of kit ideas would be greatly appreciated down below. See you in the next video. Peace out.